The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and ourselves in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then they went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, Who was the greatest? He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure you remember several years ago, it must be over 20 by now, when the Da Vinci Code was all the rage, and critics of Christianity were thrilled. Here, surely, was the tool that would bring down the Church, a supposed conspiracy to cover up the fact that Jesus had a child, that he was married and had had a son, and there was this recondite, complicated, Byzantine plot to cover it up, and yet symbols hidden throughout Western art supposedly pointed toward this truth. Remember when symbologist was a supposed career path that someone could pursue? All of it wrapped up in all of these layers of mystery, and at the heart of it was essentially nothing but smoke and shadow. The Italian author Umberto Eco wrote a book, Foucault's Pendulum, which was all about unraveling the mysteries of these secret societies. It's a novel, but it's a brilliant one, and it points at something very true, because at the end, the secret that united all of these various secret societies, the secret they had was that they had a secret. It was a bit like when you were a kid and you had a secret club. 
and the secret was that you existed because nobody else knew or cared, right? Often approaches to the faith are wrapped in that kind of assumption. There is some secret knowledge, and the, the possessing of that knowledge unlocks the, the, the recondite mysteries of Christianity. Dan Brown just took that and developed it, right? Oh, there are symbols hidden everywhere, and once you understand them, it unlocks the truth at the heart of all things. There's some sort of Gnostic aspect to this approach to faith, that once you have this secret knowledge, it will unlock all things for you. And Jesus here cuts that all down to size. As his disciples are arguing who's the greatest, who is the best among them, who is the favorite of Jesus, who is the one who is holiest, who is the one closest to God, Jesus places a child in the midst of them and says, whoever receives this child receives me. Well, how do you receive a child? With openness and love. There's no guile in a little child. There's no secrecy. There is no conspiracy. There is only openness and love. So often we create these things. We create these complexities. We create these rules to make a hierarchy. Who is more important? Who is less important? Now, there is great value in a real hierarchy of merit. I mean, if you're going to go and have an operation, who do you want as your doctor? You want to have the doctor who's the best in the field, right? If you're in serious legal trouble, you don't want the lawyer who was passed along just so that he'd feel good. There are legitimate hierarchies of merit, but in terms of the faith, there is only one test. There is only one great measure, and that is... Do you welcome Christ? Do you welcome him in the least and the smallest in the world? Can you see him in the weakness of a child? Because if you see him there, then you see him truly. If you find God in the stillness, not the earthquake or the storm, then you find him truly. If you know God on the cross, then you will see him in the resurrection. If God is in the prisoner, if God is in the poor, if God is in the naked and the thirsty and the hungry, if there you can find God, you have truly found the presence of the holy. All of our categories of high or low, in or out, are meaningless to God. All that matters is do we open our arms to Christ as we would to a little child, and do we run to the arms of God as a little child ourselves. There is no greater or lesser in God's eyes. That is why at a Christian funeral we cover the casket in a funeral pall. And it doesn't matter if the casket is the casket of a king, a corporate tycoon, a sports star, a great celebrity, a factory worker, a farmer, the clerk at Tim Hortons, or a homeless addict. It doesn't matter. All are equal in the sight of God. The only measure of our status in Christ is our openness to receive him. May we be so open as to find him in the smallest, in the least, in the little child. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.